Hey, and welcome everybody to another True North Disc Golf production. Today we're going to be looking at a USDGC qualifier that was brought to us from uh, all our friends up at the Golf North properties. Uh, this is called the first annual Foxwood Open. Man. I am so happy to see these American tournaments moving into Canada. Bringing a qualifier here is a big, big deal. Big shout out to Adam Hussey and to Daryl Bankas for all their work and definitely uh, all of our help from our two big sponsors here. Number one being Innova Disc Golf. Um, these guys care. They've invested a lot of money and time and energy into helping to grow the sport in Canada. So we definitely support them here at True North. We carry all their products in our shop, of course. And also explore Waterloo Region. These guys have invested a lot into the Kitchener area and we'll definitely be talking with them as the show progresses. And hey, look at that. It's me. And today we're joined with special guest Marty Handel. How's it going, man? Say what's up. I'm good. Uh, thanks for having me, Jeff. Looking forward to watching some disc golf. Cool, man. I think our goose there, what is that? What kind of bird was that? That's Canadian, Canadian goose. Is it a goose? Oh, I think mm -hmm. he approves. And speaking of which, check this out. We got Marty sitting here at 1,015. Ah, oh, I am comfy. This is Chris Ozelins. Um, played with him quite a bit in Canada. He's a great competitor and uh, broke a thousand rating and uh, uh, look forward to competing. Cool. Well, congratulations to him. We'll see how that shapes up. Kim is back. He's been off the circuit for a number of he years. He has been in a bit of a hiatus, but he's back, and he is, at one point, the, was the strongest Canadian player and for a while. Well, let's see how he does. And next up is James Duong. James Duong. He's uh, making his way up the ranks. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about this guy. It, it's a pleasure to have him on the card. He's a positive dude. He's always smiling. Absolutely. All right. Starting off with round one see what happens here. Uh, big out shout outs too as well uh, to Discraft, Toplink. Uh, these guys have helped support these players quite a bit. And Chris Oslin's right now sitting as a free agent. Uh, this is a guy you want to pick up and invest in. Uh, starting the event off, we have hole ones, par four, 725 feet. You'll notice the wind today is rated at 48 kilometers an hour. You're going to kind of watch the trees and, and, and everything that's going on. You're going to see gusts anywhere from 10 kilometers and up. What were you thinking today when you were checking out the weather well wind is is one thing to consider but you also have OB on the left which um, with the if the winds here you can see it's coming headwind with a slight right to left so when uh, most people attack this hole they like to attack it on a, if your right hand backhand uh, with a hyzer and uh, keeping in mind that that the once the disc stables up it's gonna be pushed to the left I attack with more of a straight shot and uh, this disc looks very well up until the very end it, it it does flirt a little bit with the left side but uh well in well inside bounds awesome first shot up you get some progress up here this looks like a pretty ideal position for your drive yeah you want to you want to get to at least 400 off the drive being downhill that's very achievable um position is uh being wide open you have a lot of option of different landing spots there's uh, quite a bit of room on the right um, and you see that uh, Oz is doing a, a kind of a straight shot here and he's in good position it looks like and up, up on top of this ridge is, is a primary, prime real estate for your next shot. Definitely a favorable skip to be in that position and certainly attackable at this point well within his range. Hmm. Next up, Kim Scott. This guy's a powerhouse. Can't quite tell what's in his hand. Huge drive. I think he expected that to flip up a little bit more. Yeah, I've seen him drive many times and he looked a little bit under, under committed, possibly because of the wind. Ooh, an unfortunate OB. He definitely didn't get enough Anheuser on that disc to pull it right. It's gonna make it very difficult to save your power from that position, but uh, I wouldn't count him out. Next up, James Duong. This guy's an up-and-comer. We've seen him a few times on the program. He's rated around 979, and I know he's been working extremely hard to break that 1K barrier. Let's see how he does. Looks decent. Looks like it's going to leak off to the left. His sidearm is one of his uh, top strengths, and his putting as well. His backhand is coming quite a ways. Um, First shot, kind of a big hyzer shot here. Seems to be playing a little more safer, which is 
not a bad play when you have OB left of the basket. And if you look closely there, there's maybe 15 uh, feet or so from the OB line. Kim on his third shot, counting his OB. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's checking up nice. Well done. Not only is that a great position, he's putting uphill, but he's not having to worry about that OB line behind. And I'm not sure if he meant to do that, but he gave himself a, a tailwind putt, which is uh, another bonus. Smart, smart move. Next up is Chris Oz. Yeah, it's inbounds. Um, a little shorter than he wanted to be. I'm using a metal flake gator here, and I undercommitted on my line, and uh, maybe the, the power is there, but I, I missed, I misjudged something there, and I'll be paying the price of trying to save a par. James Duong with sort of a death pot here. Ooh, almost. Oh. It's close. It's a couple inches to the left, and he would have been able to cash that. It's funny too, this is an example where the wind just suddenly picks up and mm -hmm. makes this course very difficult today in play because of that. When we played, we had a slight discrepancy of where I went out of bounds. Oh. Nice! Nice putt. Thank you. Uh, where I actually went out of bounds because of the angles of, of how the disc traveled and also what we could see. And uh, Are you concerned there with missing? Because it looks like you're going to be oh, 30 was, plus feet past the basket with that tailwind. Let's we'll just say I was excited to make that putt because of that <laughs> wind. Yeah. I was excited. Great job. Moving on to Oz. Oz is a very confident putter. Nicely done. Very nice. Just over the rim. So for those of you who have been following our program, we've just added these new animations um, for the um, pars and birdies and so on. So we wanted to give a uh, big shout out to uh, Tyler Turcott and all of the work he's been doing on developing that product. Uh, so I guess we have three pars here and a birdie. I'm extremely impressed with Kim's recovery after that um, OB out of the gate. Absolutely. And same with yourself. Thank I mean, you. This is a solid score. Um, cool. So tell me a little bit more about this hole. What do you think? This hole is short, but could cause some, some uh, well, b having a basket on the hill, uh, you want to be as close as possible and uh, to have a tailwind putt you would have to go down the hill but uh, for this one you want proximity an easy tap in walk away with an easy two but it's not a, really a gimme if you uh, if you come up short you have to make a, a, a very um, wise decision on whether to to go for it or to lay up and that takes uh, that takes willpower and just to uh, point out, this is a par 3, 250 footer, and a big shout out to Wellington Brewery for all of their support on the event, and we'll definitely be talking about them more as the show progresses. Uh, Oz with a big skip, takes an OB, definitely not within the plan. It's very easy to throw too far on a 250 foot hole, so it really comes down to distance control. And I chose to do an Anheuser and use the well manicured green to slide up the hill. And from my angle from the tee, it looked like it was like I was walking away with an easy two. Yeah, that was a textbook shot. Thank you. That's Marty doing Marty things. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and Kim just with a just, very fortunate wow. skip there. And it's good because that's out of bounds on that green. Yeah, and for the viewers that don't know, you see three different heights of grass. The shortest grass is measured as OB. The medium and uh, long length grass are both in play. Wow, what a flare. There is out of bounds beyond the basket, and you can see, um, you can't really see from here, but um, there's a reasonable amount. See, he made a good decision here to to lay up, and it takes a lot of thought process out of it. Do you think, and honestly, watching this when I was filming, I felt like he could have just pitched that up closer. It feels Absolutely. like he just gave himself risk he didn't need to. Mm -hmm. James with an unfortunate putt. The trees might not show it, but it, the wind can uh, gust. The wind gusts are hitting up to 45 kilometers an hour at some points, and I think that may have affected that putt there. Mm -hmm. He uh, made a pro move by missing low. At least he's tapping in, walking away with the par, which is 
can tell he's not he's not uh, too proud of that putt. He does not look happy. So fantastic drive. Mm. Ouch. So what happened here? Because this is a terrible outcome. Well, I'm. It's still early in the match. I, I was feeling a little bit of nerves and uh, that headwind. You could see my disc. Just, oh wow! What a putt! Yes. I I switched my putting style there for a more of a uh, kind of a, a, a shovel putt or a, I call it a pitch putt or a uh, use, using the tailwind to help it drop because I I had no fear of that disc lifting. I just had to make sure I had to make the height. And I was very happy to save a four there because that that could have got that could have got really ugly quick. It's one of the things you're known for too is recovery. I mean that didn't seem to affect your mental game at all. You just picked it up, pushed through it, mm -hmm. did your best with what you had, and made it work. Yeah, because it could have been a whole lot worse. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of players that right there would rattle them and cause them a lot of difficulty. I guess that's one of the factors in breaking the thousand rating and what you need mentally to pull it off. Yeah, damage control is a, uh, it's a it's a key factor. I mean, uh, you walk into to, to play around, you want a, a you want a solid game plan, and you uh, and by doing that, you have to choose certain paths that uh, that can help manage damage control. What goes through your mind when you make a mistake to recover and not let it do any more damage? Is there something or a process that you do? Um, when it, when it comes to after a mistake is you just got to buckle up and uh, do the best you can to uh, to stop the bleeding or to, to to make your shot as as relaxed as possible that you would uh, w without letting uh, you know the um, you know le letting your nerves or, or a aggression get to you from from being angered from a mistake. Hole three, par three, 380 feet, uh, sponsored by Monica Bell. Now we've got um, some OB here. Is this path OB? This path is in bounds, I believe. Okay. Oh, so wait, wait. I actually, it may be. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, it's okay. I, I I forgot. My understanding was that this path was not playing OB in the event, but okay. this sort of tall grass that you see to the right of the path yep. is OB. Yes, yeah, so that tall grass on the right is out of bounds. Um, also, if you go past uh, the path as well, the the path. In, the reason I was confused is because that path was played out of bounds um, years previous, but this year I believe it was safe. Okay. First drive out of the gate, just parked. Yes. No. Oz's Oz's sidearm is uh, is a strength, for sure, and he played that very well. I'm gonna play a straight. Um, it looks like yeah, it's got a rock shot here, a Casey rock. I'm throwing this straight, hoping for a slight turn and. Uh, Yes, this edged it really nicely. It got jammed up a little bit on that uh, the grass there, but I think almost that pathway gave you a little bit of extra extra speed when it landed. It did, yeah. James with a tough putt here. Mm, that was close. Great run. It goes to show you how much easier a hole like this plays when you can get that extra ten feet closer to the basket. Yeah. Textbook putt. Thank you. One of the things that I've noticed with your game is how much attention you pay into your routine. It's very necessary. I find um, it's easy to let your mind wander off or uh, seem that you're you're focusing and just going through movements or like a, you know you have to you have to be set in your mind and uh, it helps you stay in your own, a game that you want to play. I mean, there's there's times where the mind can wander off and. Uh, you know, having a, not just being physically composed, but mentally composed is, is extremely important. Awesome. So we've got uh, three birdies in a par, uh, well within the range to star card that for James, an unfortunate putt, uh, but he's definitely not out of the action at all. Right now we're sitting pretty close, uh, overall scores, a uh, couple people sitting at even, uh, Kim and Chris sitting at one down. Not bad considering uh, what's happened so far in the first three holes. Yeah, with some of the putts I've made, uh, I would expect to be uh, a little bit more below par. But um, you know, th those those putts made are strokes saved, and uh, now we're moving on to a shorter hole. And uh, this right here, people should be walking through this. Uh, let's see, the um, this was playing at a 3.13, which I'm. 0.13 above par, which is surprising. This should be playing well below 
but there is tight out of bounds to the left. Um, the green is well playing out of bounds, and uh, you might not see it, but there is water left of there. So if you do mess up, you might be saying goodbye to your disc. So hole four, par three, 220 feet. We've got OB along the left in the water. There's a clear, kind of a clear green line painted there. Uh, as always with the rest of the course, the putting green for the regular ball golf is out of bounds, and the medium and long grass is in play couple of decent drives. I guess the strategy here is to come out wide to the right, highs are in. Yeah, you don't want to do this. This is an uh, early release. I'm lucky enough to stay in bounds and a little disappointed in myself right there. But, um, you know, I'm going to do my best to uh, try to get back on top. James with kind of a semi-wide hyzer. He did pop over the OB line. Uh, as I recall, he didn't end up in the water, but he ended up past it and sort of on the edge. So he was lucky to retrieve that disc. Throwing from the drop zone here. Pretty good bid. It was. So there's nice uh, right to left wind uh, forcing those discs to push towards the left side. For two. I was trying to go for this, but I think my body didn't let me do when I was when I was watching this live, I, it almost felt like you had wanted to go for it, and then you sort of mentally decided you were going to lay it up. It sort of looked like it was in the middle. Mm -hmm. Chris with a far more difficult putt than it actually looked. Yeah, slightly. This, this replay should Yeah, help. a little obstructed. Look at that. Great cash. Well done. Low ceiling, a little obstruction. Didn't stop him. Yeah, he's pretty happy with that. Kim kind of tight around this tree. But I like how Kim played off that tree and landed in a rate. Well, he must have tweaked something there. Yeah, I talked to him afterwards. He His leg just cramped up a little bit, but it didn't affect his play. I think he recovered by the next hole. James taking his time here. Nice putt, Good James. Putt. Good recovery. These types of situations can show you how your drive can drastically impact the outcome of a hole even if it's short like this mm -hmm. clean up your par time to move on is that friends at innova you can kind of see a little bit of foreshadowing with the win later mm -hmm. uh marty with a three couple of uh birdies from chris oz and kim scott and uh james rounding off with a uh bogey uh it's Interesting to see Chris and Kim still fighting here neck and neck. Couple of strokes down. Uh, you're just trailing behind, well within striking zone. Mm -hmm. uh, moving to hole five, par four, 600 footer. This path to the left is all OB. You also have all OB right on the rough, and you're gonna kind of, as you work your way up the fairway here, run into a pile of trees. The, all, these all act as obstructions. Um, you're met with a very small kind of water run here. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, onto the green. And this doesn't play as, uh, as your regular out of bounds. There is a drop zone. So if you do not land in bounds, you'll be going to that drop zone. Doesn't matter if you throw 500 feet up the fairway. And Kim opts to throw a roller here. And this is well played. Well played. A little bit risky, but it paid off for him. And he's well up the fairway. Yeah, that's a fantastic shot. I've, I've noticed rollers are a common strategy. Um, Chris with his extremely powerful sidearm. There's nothing wrong with this. Solid, solid play. Safe, comfortable. Yep, and you can see he's not too far from back from Kim. Uh, good, you know, being in bounds, obviously, and, and up the fairway, he can't complain with that. And uh, I'm going to throw an Anheuser, and I, I can use it. Having a tailwind, I thought this would come out of it. And it cut rolled Ouch. out of bounds. That, that is so unusual. I mean, I'd almost say that arguably the wind impacted that enough to make that pretty unlucky. Well, it, you know, it was just bad air. I, uh, I'm starting to feel a little bit of um, urgency to try to get under par. And I mm -hmm. think that might have played into, uh, you know, what we were talking about with the mental game. Um, it's I, human nature. Yeah. And here I, I'm trying to go uh, like a hero. This and, is pumped. Yes, yeah, so this. My goodness, you crushed that. Oh, it looked like it was. It would have been amazing if it made its way back to the left. Wow. Un unfortunately, I will be taking where where the group puts me for uh, my next shot. 
James just taking a safe, methodical route, two shots. Yeah, I don't. I don't think striking distance. It didn't look like he was at, uh, attacking the basket there. Oz with a pump just clips the tree, kind of shaves off a lot of the power. But I think he's in about the same spot as James is. Kim's been working on his forehand lately, and it. Um, that's not a good example of it, but uh, he, he has been coming along quite a bit with it, and he's feeling more comfortable using it in tournaments, which is nice to see, you know, some versatility. Yeah, you can see how these trees can really act as obstructors to try to reach that uh, green. Chris with a, a park job here. Yeah, it's a good touch there. Yeah, it's solid. James looking to do the same thing. Looks like he does. Yeah. Clip in the tree. Good roll. Mm -hmm. That'll work. So, based on what... This is where you agreed to move to. Are you running this? I'm giving it a small bid. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I like I gotta, I gotta give it a small bid. But uh, at the same time, I can't ch you know chip it, chip at it, and go past it. I. After a couple of OBs, you're almost you almost want to put on the break and not Ooh. Put, too, put too much risk. That was a decent bid as well that from was. Kim. That just flashed the chains. Yeah. yeah. That he left himself some meat on the bone there. Oh, wow. Double. Well, move on to the next one. It happens. Um, I think this is really, really good for the audience to see because sometimes... Even the strongest players in the country, they're going to make mistakes. But that doesn't mean that you're out. And this hole does play 0.65 over par, mm -hmm. uh, showing some of the uh, the uniqueness uh, and technicality of this hole can cause some damage. And it sees That's it. Me. And we see it there. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying how uh, the hole does have some danger. And uh, if you misplay it uh, and don't take it uh, correctly, it can, it can get to you. Uh, Marty with a double, uh, three pars. Uh, it looks like you're about four strokes behind the leader pack right now. Honestly, when you're dealing with this kind of win, this kind of um, just just general course conditions, plenty of room for you to catch up. Um, yeah. Hole six, par three, 250 footer. This is littered with danger. We've got hazards on the left here with a couple of sand traps. Yep. This entire putting green is OB. Yep. The line and forest behind this basket uh, is also OB. Yep. Um, and it looks like the strategy is to kind of try to crash into these hills and Correct. utilize that. Correct. You can see that the, those hills are are there, and uh, it looks like Kim's played over top of those hills. So it, um, <laughs> Kim doing Kim things. But he should be able to save a par from there uh, with, with not too much difficulty. So I think with that shot, I think uh, Oz is making an adjustment here. Yes, he's playing off to the right. This is a smart play. Playing into this this little dimple between these hills is uh, is a good play, and that's what I'm going to aim for as well. Pretty perfect shot. And also, shout out to Tin Lid. Uh, this is Daryl Banks' company, and he's done so much for the community to help put in courses and help expand the game. So thank you so much, Daryl, for you and your company's work and pulling that off. Uh, James Duong with a drive here in the hazard on the left. This is a San Marino AVR and uh, came in a little hot, but it made that dimple. And this, these two shots from, uh, I believe that was uh, Oz's drive there as well. That is this hole played mm -hmm. perfectly. Ooh. James with kind of just a bump off the basket. Kim looking to save par. Well done. Shot. Well done. Making the best of uh, of that drive, which actually isn't that punishing. Even if you go past it, your OB line is close enough to be able to work with it. Yeah, I mean, if if you like, that's another thing with the course management. If you if you play out of bounds near a basket, and you know the, the recovery is is not not as severe. You can definitely see the wind picking up now on these trees. Yeah. And this is the thing to reiterate. Uh, <laughs> There's so much randomity in the weather. You can have winds that are 10 kilometers an hour, be mid throw, and all of a sudden they gust to 30. And it makes it extremely difficult to play consistently. Absolutely. With the the, the gusts spontaneously hitting at certain times, it almost, it almost pays off to pay attention 
and to see these uh, the winds coming in from a distance and you might be able to make an adjustment mm -hmm. to hopefully uh, navigate a, a better disc throw a couple of excellent drives from you and Oz. Uh, birdies follow as a result of that. Um, and a par, respectively, for that OB drive. And James with an unfortunate hazard results in uh, in a bogey. Uh, hole 7, par 4, 480 footer. Uh, this hole normally, in ideal conditions, isn't too, too bad. I've seen a lot of you guys consistently throw rollers forearms, backhands, get through that uh, triple mando and, and park up there. But once these uh, course conditions are in play, how difficult is this? Um, with the course conditions and the wind, um, you, 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 play, you still play towards your game plan. And uh, for me, a roller has not let me down. And unfortunately, I missed the mando. But so you can see the, the, the rolling play leads right towards the hill could potentially give you an eagle opportunity if you obviously make the primary objective which is the mando um i think we're going to see kim do the same and he hit the mando very well yeah it's going way right though yeah it's gonna like he said it's um it's that's not a bad away. result i don't that doesn't feel way right at all in fact that's almost in a perfect position to be able to pitch up for three absolutely in that position uh, a birdie is looking very achievable James with a sidearm here. Oh. 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 And he didn't go past the Mando. So that means he's going to have to somehow figure out a method to get through there. It's painful because inches are just punishing James. Oh. I think he took bark off the tree there. Yeah. Oz with a pretty safe shot. That type of forearm, if he can get another couple of feet to the left around that tree, that's almost going to be parked. James with an extremely difficult angle here and somehow makes it work. Pitching out wide here is actually pretty smart because you have a beautiful look now at the basket way outside the left down that fairway. Here we are at the Mando. I'm throwing a Stingray here and I didn't get it to cut enough to the right. And this thing, wow, it's going, it's going quite far. Just scoot over here past the tree to get a yeah. better look. <laughs> Here we get to see James' sidearm here. You can see he's got a quite the whip. Great shot. Yeah, well done. I think he was well, he, probably hoping for a little bit more of a skip, but... Thing to note here, no OBs at this point. He hasn't really had any issues. He just had to work up the course. Mm -hmm. Oz, couple of shots here, pretty safe. An unfortunate tree kick. This isn't much better. Um, this level of progress after three shots for a player like him uh, he definitely wanted more. Well, he was very concentrated on the line. I think he didn't respect the ceiling, and uh, that's what happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. One thing to know, too, as well, uh, golf courses play a lot differently than forest play because you have these flat, well-groomed grass. Mm -hmm. become extremely easy to throw rollers on and kind of count on the ground. Yeah. This ground is interesting, however, with all the pine cones and stuff on it. Is that what these are? The yes. Little... Uh, yeah, those are all pine cones. All right. Uh, it looks like uh, I <laughs> that's I, Marty doing Marty things. You know the the the, the branches <laughs> didn't stop me there. And that's good. Oh, oh, off the rim. Kim with a magnet shot in the band. Oh, oh. James, he's usually a, he's usually a very strong putter, but this wind can make you second guess a lot of things. James is a player that I'm so proud of. Not only is he uh, a super gentleman, I mean, he's an extremely positive and fun guy to play golf with and hang out with, yep. um, but he has put in a ton of work in his game. And if you kind of look up his ratings over the last couple of years, he's gained a ton of progress. So I only see good things for him in his future. And he's also a young guy. So plenty of uh, life left in his game. We move on. Moving on, after hole seven, um, three bogeys, got a par out of Kim. I think that's a direct result of that fantastic roll or, and that gamble kind of paying off. Uh, and honestly, based on the outcomes and stuff out of the initial drives, fives aren't terrible. Hole eight, 
par three, 205 footer. The wind isn't too bad in this area. You've got a lot of tree coverage. This is way more uphill than it looks. So it's probably playing more like 250, 265. I would say more around the 240-ish mark uh, mm -hmm. for power wise, but the, the ceiling is what makes things difficult mm -hmm. here. And you have out of bounds to the right. So it's gonna make side armor second guess on attacking it uh, strongly. So you're gonna, you might see some backhand Anheuser's, which will slide up, and that was textbook. Excellent shot, and big shout out to Disc Golf United for all their support uh, on this tournament. Next up is Chris Oz. And what I was saying about the sidearm, he's, he played that uh, very well. Um, I'm, I'm thinking he's hoping for a more of a, a skip and uh, for that disc to settle underneath the basket. Forearm seems easier on this, uh, unless it's you. <laughs> I gave it a, with a short hole it's easy to go blasting past so it is really about distance control line and using the ground to uh, check up properly and with a with a golf course you have well manicured grass and, mm -hmm. and some hard ground so discs can can flare a little bit more than you expect uh, just to note, this path on the right is OB past it. So a little bit of uh, some danger there on Oz's putt if he misses. Uh, but fantastic putt nonetheless. Absolutely. Picks up his birdie. And this has kind of put us in scoring ground here to make a star. Let's see what happens. Nice. Methodical putt. Winds were slight tailwind here. I missed. Another <laughs> Sandy joking in the background. Always having a good time. Yeah, she, she keeps me in a, a good mental state. And I guess she was caddying for you on this event. Correct. That's awesome. It's good to have her in your corner. I know she um, she's a big supporter. Yeah, she understands my game um, and uh, what it takes for me to, uh, you know, keep my uh, my mind settled and uh, you know keep your your head down and and uh, work you know working hard. And it looks like we have a star card here. Nice. Pretty cool. First one of the event. Yeah, and it looks like some of us had to work. Uh, you know, to, to get that birdie put in, but um, a couple good park jobs from Kim, and I think James was did James have the putt there? No, he was pretty close. Yeah, he got he got absolutely parked. Yeah. He, I think he was the closest there. Uh, four strokes behind, we got two players at minus three between uh, Oz and uh, KSW. You're trailing by four strokes at the moment. Definitely not a gap that'll be difficult to close as the event progresses. Uh, hole nine, par three, 305 footer. Uh, a lot of danger here. OB on the right along that line. Uh, OB behind. All of this water here on the left. This tree can act as a backstop, but definitely not reliable. Kim with a backhand. I like this angle. Uh, I don't like the distance, but this is a pretty good shot. Yeah, it's very easy to uh, misjudge the distance when you have a downhole shot. Mm -hmm. Hear that big gust as he threw his drive. I think Oz took the safer route here. Yeah. It Maybe looks, too much. Yeah, that's what it seems to be. There's a fine balance between getting too far away and putting into that OB behind. This looks pretty good. You got to be happy with that. I am with the conditions um, making things more challenging than normal. But it, it, this course is naturally a lot windier. It's being wide open. It's out in the country. Um, oh, snap. This is in danger of going in the water. I think it stayed up, though. <sighs> yeah, it's good. Looks like it's it's good. That's extremely yeah. close to ending up in the drink. Oz with a scary bit. Oh, no OB graphic. I think we're okay. <laughs> if I recall, that was right on the line. That's right. Are they playing by line or by water? There was a green paint line oh, okay. um, on the OB along, and I believe the water itself was playing within the water. Another band oh, hit. Another band hit. I think this is sort of the story of Kim's life. That band looks about three feet tall when he's putting. Another left side hit, but that's okay. It's in. To be honest, this is good for you. Um, you definitely want to pick up a stroke against Kim. And also with Chris, you can see how close he is. He's actually standing on the OB line there, which I'm surprised he didn't take the meter. 
Well, in my Maybe mind, he did. In my mind, for the the game that I'm playing, I just want to get things started. I just want mm-hmm. to make myself and uh, get under par. At this point, I feel I feel a little left behind. So mm-hmm. it's uh, it's time for me to step on the gas and 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 try to make things happen. But in conditions like these, it can be difficult. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you took a lot of damage on hole two. Uh, you definitely took a lot of damage on hole five. And looking at your position right now, you're only three strokes back from the leaderboard. This is an important stroke to pick up, not only to improve your chances of getting back into first place, uh, but also for your mental, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, James sitting at plus two. Oz and Kim maintain their lead at minus three, respectively. And that is the end of the front nine. All right. A big shout out to Top Link Disc Golf. Uh, they are a massive backbone to what we do here at True North at the retail shop. Uh, Ryan, thanks, buddy, for everything you do. You do a million things. And uh, also, he contributes a great deal into these video productions mm-hmm. in resources. So for those of you that don't know that, one of the big reasons why you have this coverage is because of him and all his crew up there at Top Link. So thanks so much for that, buddy. Thanks. Uh, looking at what's going on here... Um, oh yeah, uh, I guess I'll do a quick plug on the retail store. I wanted to say thank you to all of our customers the last few weeks. Uh, we've got a lot of discs coming in secondhand, and that is a big part of our business. So if you have any discs you're not throwing at home, whether you got them from events or you just bought them and don't use them or bought them online and they weren't the right fit, bring them into us. We'll buy them cash. We'll pay you store credit, uh, whatever we can do. Uh, and also Marty, great job, man. Like first nine are the jitters over. How you feeling? Uh, you mean in the commentating or, yeah. or the playing in this game? Well, a little of both. <laughs> well, it's it's no, I, I enjoy watching golf, and I it's, you know, it's it's an honor to be here with you and uh, and to do this and uh, you know break down the game the, the best way I can, and to give uh, you know a bit of insight at what's going on in the mind of a player and also what's. Uh, you know, maybe the, a better understanding of wind direction, wind gusts. Sometimes the trees don't show uh, on video of how intense uh, the winds are. Um, I'm not trying to make up excuses here, but, you know, they, they, they play a big factor. Mm-hmm. Oh, makes complete sense. And also, a uh, big shout out to Explore Waterloo. Uh, if you have a chance to check out their website, uh, I was able to do that a few times. It's actually fascinating what they do. They do all kinds of interviews with businesses around. You can get coupons. You can find out about things that are happening all around the area. Um, and I encourage you to go to their website and check that out. They have taken a risk here. Uh, Disc Golf is not a huge community at the moment, and they've decided to contribute a lot of resources to helping uh, promote this event. So uh, if you want to do us a big solid, check out their website, uh, explore it a little bit, see what's going on. And uh, as soon as we finish off with the program here, we're going to play a short uh, uh, ad from them. It's actually a well-made video. I enjoyed watching it. Uh, So check it out. All right. So check out the uh, message from our sponsor. Thanks, guys.